Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be going over some of the most popular fighters all throughout the history of MMA, going up their current gem, putting them into a tier list, going from super underrated and deserve more respect on their name all the way to super overrated. I frankly just don't get the hype. Now, to avoid an all-out comment sex and war, which probably is going to occur either way, I'm going to give a justification for the placement of every fighter on this list. Now, I will give respect where respect is due. Only about half of this tier list is mine. This is actually on the tier maker website. Just look up UFC overrated, underrated, and you'll find this tier list. I just wanted to add a few more because I think this was made a while back ago and I needed to update it. And with that out of the way, please consider a like, comment, subscribe, helps me in the algorithm. And if you have a video suggestion, please drop it in the comment section below. Really helps me out. And with that out of the way, let's get started. The first fighter on this list is going to be Ben Askren. <clears throat> okay. There's a lot of MMA intellectuals, like I'm, I'm going to put air quotation marks, that won't shut up about saying Ben Askren is super underrated, and if he came into the UFC in his prime, he would have dominated the welterweight division. No, you are a contrarian. That is not true. I will say he is underrated because I do agree with you. He came into the UFC out of his prime, but the fact is, even if we're looking at a prime Ben Askren, he is not the American Khabib. He just isn't. I'm sorry. Daniel Cormier is a better MMA grappler than he is. And even Bo Nickel, I would argue, is a better grappler for MMA than Ben Askren is. Yes, didn't come into the UFC in his prime. Just really isn't that great. However, he, he was never outright terrible until, you know, he got a double hip surgery. Next up is BJ Penn. I'm going to say properly overrated, okay? Like, some people do take it a little bit too far, but for those fighters that have either a fan base that is crazy or a hater base that is crazy, I'm going to take the average of the two. That is how I think of BJ Penn. Some people will argue that BJ Penn is the second best lightweight champion ever. I wouldn't go that far. I don't think he's there yet. However, I can't deny when a man does something insane, like win the ADCCs with only three years of training. Bro got his black belt in three years. That takes a lot of talent. Even if you think, oh, Jiu-Jitsu has evolved a lot since then, you are perfectly right. Winning ADCC in three years is absolutely unheard of. That I don't think anybody's ever been able to do that since then. Like, you have to go and properly overrated for that reason. Um... He is almost overrated purely because of the amount of people that say that he would have beat anybody in the UFC in his absolute prime. No. GSP's better. Just is. I'm sorry. Next up is Brock Lesnar. Overrated. Yeah, no, overrated. No, I'm not going to say super overrated because the fact is, is Brock Lesnar is legitimately skilled. But I'm going to say it right now. If you took prime Brock Lesnar and put him in the current heavyweight division... He's not breaking the top five. I think he would have a lot of problems with somebody like Tai Tuivasa. Like, legitimately. I think his best chance at winning, as crazy as it would be, would be a Cyril Gaon, purely because Cyril Gaon just can't grapple, and I can see him being able to do that. But, like, John Jones. The, like, the fact that John Jones versus Brock Lesnar was a fight that we were really talking about, I think John Jones would have no-diffed Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, frankly, heavyweight's just not that good of a division. So when people want to say, oh, he became a champion in the heavyweight division, doesn't that mean something? Yeah, but heavyweight is... Heavyweight at that point is like the current women's bantamweight division. Like, they needed a star. That's why Brock Lesnar was there in the first place. Yes, they have some good fighters, but you have to get to the top of that division for there to be good fighters. Yeah, pretty overrated. I'm not going to say super overrated because people are waking up to the fact that, oh, maybe he wasn't that good. But like, modern day, Tom Aspinall, no diff clears. Cyril Gaon would outstrike him pretty easily. Tai Tuivasa could KO him. John Jones beats him and Stipe beats him. Like, for real. Next up is Conor McGregor. I'm going to say the top of properly overrated, nearing on overrated. And the only reason I say that, this is one that's going to be my controversial one. Because there's another fighter I'm going to play somewhere else that nobody's really going to like. Conor McGregor has two different fan bases, or bases. His fan base believes that he should be in the top five best MMA fighters of all time. That includes my brother. My brother actually says Conor McGregor is the 
fifth best MMA fighter of all time. He is a casual fan. Love him to death. He doesn't know shit. Conor McGregor's not in the top five. He's not in the top ten. He's not even in the top fifteen. You'd be pussing it putting him in the top twenty. That's a fact. However, to say that he fought nobody good is insane. Jose Aldo's not good. Like, don't get me wrong. If you want to call it a fluke win, even calling it a fluke win's kind of crazy because that was a calculated punts. And you want to say, oh, well, Conor McGregor was in his head. Run that fight back. That might not have happened. Oh, yeah, I know it probably wouldn't have happened again. Like, that was a one in a million chance. Beat Chad Mendez. I understand that's on short notice. Chad Mendez means something. Beat Jose Aldo. Beat, beat Eddie Alvarez. Like, don't get me wrong. Not even in the top 20. Still won two belts. Okay? Like, I can't put him as underrated purely because he's not super great. I can't put him as overrated because he's not terrible. Okay? Properly overrated, nearing on overrated. Okay? I think that's pretty fair. Next up is Chris Cyborg. I'm going to say underrated. Because the people that know of Chris Cyborg do say that if she was in the UFC today, she would probably become a champion. And probably. Amanda Nunes. I mean, they had to hide Ronda Rousey from... They had to hide Ronda Rousey from Chris Cyborg because they thought Chris Cyborg was going to win. The UFC heavy disrespected Chris Cyborg the entire time that she had tenure in the UFC. And whether you believe that's justified or not, that's completely up to your discretion. The fact is, is I would argue she is underrated, okay? Not super underrated because the people that know of her do say she's really good, but the amount of people who don't know who Chris Cyborg is because they barely watch women's MMA, and to be fair, I don't even really blame you. If you brought her back, I, did, I think she would become a champion of, bat, of bantamweight, in all honesty. Next up is Daniel Cormier. You know what? You know what? I'm going to put him so super over... No, no whoa, whoa, whoa. Let them super underrated. I have no clue why I almost made the worst mistake of this entire video. The fact is, is the amount of people that put disrespect on DC's name is insane. Like he wasn't one of the biggest savages in the light heavyweight division. The fact is, is he fought a cheater, John Jones. John Jones is better. Okay, he is. Can we agree on that? John Jones is better. There's no John Jones. Daniel Cormier is the best light heavyweight to ever live. And honestly, if there's no John Jones. Seriously, Daniel Cormier can make a case for being one of the greatest MMA fighters of all time. Like, he would be in the top three best MMA fighters of all time if there's no John. That is how good Daniel Cormier was. Disrespected his entire career because he was fat. Let's just be real here. People didn't like him because he was fat and kind of cringy. Becomes a commentator, and all of a sudden he becomes a lovable dude. I don't give a shit that he has biased commentary. I like Daniel Cormier. Okay? Like, I think he's super underrated. The amount of hate that he got during his... Like, think about this. People rooted for John, the actual criminal, over somebody who tells cringy dad jokes. Daniel Cormier teaches elementary school, middle school wrestling on the weekends. John Jones is fresh off a bender, and we're rooting for that. Like, you can like John more, but put some respect on my boy DC's name. Derek Lewis. I'm conflicted on this because I think most people understand the skill level of Derek Lewis. Like, I'm gonna put him, I'm gonna put him the bottom of properly overrated because people, you can argue underrated. That he's closer to underrated than he is overrated. So I'm gonna say properly overrated. The fact is, is he has crazy power for the heavyweight division. He's not athletic. He's not a championship qual like caliber fighter. He's not going to win a belt, but in all honesty, he's there to get a bag, and I respect that mentality if you know that's where you're at. And a lot of people do agree with me on that. Like, there's not a lot of people that believe Derek Lewis is has a chance to become, the like, the heavyweight champion without, you know, that being a joke. But we all love Derek Lewis, okay? Like, all everything that I've said that can be considered mean, I love Derek Lewis. Probably my second favorite, second or third. I like Tom Aspinall. Taito Ivasa and Derek Lewis. That's my big three of likability in the heavyweight division. Next up, Donald Cerrone. I'm going to say... I'm going to say slightly overrated because a lot of people... I say I don't know. Okay, I'm going to say it and then I might change it. Okay, Donald Cerrone 
is probably one of the most successful journeymans in the history of MMA. Not probably not the most successful. The only one that I would say is a, the most successful journeyman would be Jorge Masvidal. Donald Cerrone is probably the most notable one. The fact is, he was never, unless we're going to go for his prime, he was never really a super high championship caliber fighter. He was always in that top five to top ten level, would win the fights that he would need to win to keep his rank, but wouldn't win the fights that would win him the belt. But every time that we would think that he's washed up, he would win a fight in like great fashion. And then we would start thinking, oh, okay, he's going to make another championship run. The fact is, is he was there to get money. I respect that. <sighs> I'm going to say slightly overrated because the amount of people... Okay, I'm going to say slightly overrated. Just because there are some people that do think he was a little bit better than he was, okay? Eddie Alvarez. I'm going to say underrated. The amount of people that just say Eddie Alvarez is complete dog shit, lightweight champion of the world is kind of crazy. The fact is, is he had to win the title. He had some wars with Michael Chandler and Bellator. He had a great fight against RDA. Like, I was he great? No. But he wasn't terrible. Like, And here's the per thing. The reason that people consider him as terrible, the same people, um, reason that Jose Aldo isn't seen as as good as he is, but Eddie Alvarez is to a worse degree because he doesn't have the achievements of Jose Aldo. Eddie Alvarez suffered probably one of the worst performances by a champion in a title defense, while Conor McGregor had one of the best performances as a challenger. And that's the fight that everybody rem remembers from Eddie Alvarez. If you ask the casual fan, hey, name one Eddie Alvarez fight, they're going to name Conor McGregor. If you're remembered for your most famous loss, yeah, you're underrated in my eyes. Next up, I'm going to be real with you. I have no clue who this is. I have tried reverse image search. I just can't find him. I'm going to say underrated because if I don't know who you are, I'm just going to assume you're better than you are. Go in the comment section. Tell me who he is. Call me a casual. I don't care. I have literally tried reverse image searching this photo and I cannot find this guy. I tried. Next up, Pedro Munoz. I'm going to say a little, a, ton, a smidgen overrated. Okay, the fact is, is he was kind of, it was, it was a bantamweight journeyman. He was not, outside of like his prime, he was never at that like championship cal, he was, he's kind of like the Donald Cerrone of bantamweight. And that's my reasoning for it. He would do well in the fights that he would lose, but he wouldn't win the fights that he would need to win. He would keep his rank after... He would keep his rank winning the fights that he needed to do, and that's basically his entire career. He would get close, go down, get close, go down. That That's the way I see it. Next up, GSP. Properly overrated, okay? I think GSP is the best MMA fighter ever, okay? Like, the fact is, if you want to say, oh, well, John Jones would beat him, it's like, well, John Jones has to do juice, buddy. GSP didn't. Just be, beat three generations of welterweights, okay? Yeah, lost to Matt Serra, came back and absolutely dismantled the guy. And I'm telling you this right now, you do not want the undefeated syndrome to come to MMA because that completely ruins all matchmaking. The fact that GSP is considered the go after losing, that that's what I like. The fact is, is you could be the best ever. If you lose and your mentality completely breaks, in my mind, you're not the go. GSP got better because of his losses to Matt Hughes. His better because of his losses to Matt Serra. Came back and demolished both of them. So yeah, I think GSP is properly overrated. Greg Hardy. So, I really dislike Greg Hardy. I, 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 just, I just don't like the guy, okay? The fact is, disrespected my boy Derek Lewis. Get, got absolutely humbled. And whenever anybody wants to be like, oh, well, if the NFL athletes came over to the UFC, they would absolutely dominate. I know he's not your best guy. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve you guys this L real quick. Your boy got smissed by our Derek Lewis. So silence. Next up, Henry Cejudo. I'm going to say underrated. Like, don't get me wrong. He doesn't do himself any favor. I'm going to put him top of... I'm going to say bottom of underrated because you can say super underrated. The amount of disrespect that this man gets, okay? The fact is, he did beat TJ Dillashaw. He 
He did beat Dominic Cruz. He did arguably beat Demetrius Johnson. I was going to say beat Demetrius Johnson. Mm, that was close. He won the fight. Like he, He's a championship caliber fighter. The fact is, if there was a heavy... If he was heavier, if he wasn't the size of a lawn gnome, he would be considered one of the best MMA fighters of all time. That's a fact. Olympic gold medalist in wrestling. Like... For real. And he doesn't do himself any favors because the amount of time that he'll trash other champions is kind of like, okay, chill, buddy. At least they have a belt right now. The fact is, is you came back, lost to Al Jermaine, and then immediately after that, Son O'Malley KO'd the guy. Like, let's humble ourself a little bit and not disrespect the other champions. But people saying that he was a scrub, you're crazy. He's a triple champion. If you count the Olympic gold medal. Next up, Israel Adesanya. Okay, I'm going to say... This is tough. I'm going to say properly overrated to underrated purely because... like, I, Listen, I am for the Israel Adesanya slander. I have talked shit about Adesanya all over. He's the second best middleweight to ever live. He is. Strickland isn't even close. Strickland... You would be tough to put Strickland in top five, okay? The fact is, is Israel was the next dominant champion after Anderson Silva. I do think Anderson Silva's better, but at the same time, outside of a few bad performances by Israel, he beat who he had to beat to become champion, defended the belt multiple times, active champion, one of the most active champions, not the most active fighter, active champion, and did good. Like, I, I'll put respect on Israel's name. To me, he's properly overrated because the only thing that you could say is Israel's the best middleweight of all time. I think that's kind of overrating him a little bit, but he's close, okay? He's close. The fact is, is if he can come back, beat Drakus, beat Son Strickland, and beat one and beat Hamza, I would say that he is the GOAT, okay? The, 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 the GOAT of middleweight, of course. Next up, Mayhem Miller. I'm going to say slightly underrated because the amount of people that only remember him from Bully Beatdown is staggering. And a lot of people have no clue who Mayhem Miller is. Outside of, you know, the domestic abuse and all the other stuff, he did beat the Gracie Slayer. Uh, that's where I'm going to put him. I don't have a lot to say about him because the fact is, is a lot of his fights were before my time. And my, what I mean before my time is I was literally eight. 8 to 12, like when that was his peak there. I watched a lot of Bully Beatdown. So I'm not a huge expert on Mayhem Miller. I'm going to say underrated because the amount of people who have no clue who he is is kind of staggering. Next up, John Jones. I'm going to say properly, it's either properly overrated to overrated. I'm going to put him uh, slightly above Connor. Okay. The fact is, he's undefeated. The rule that he got DQ'd by should be outlawed. And the, I will say this, the amount of people that will defend him and say, oh, well, he's not a dirty fighter, dog, he holds the record for eye pokes. He holds the record for testing positive in the UFC and not being kicked. Like the, the fact that like, he's not a great dude. He's a dirty fighter. I mean, like when USADA left, he bragged about surviving USADA. What type of person does that and is not a dirty fighter? Okay. Hit under an octagon from the USADA testers. So, uh, yep. Yeah. I'm going to say properly overrated because he is, he, in my opinion, the second best MMA fighter of all time. Unless, of course, you DQ people based off of, you know, juicing. In that case, not even there. But I'm going to say the second best MMA fighter of all time. That's fair. You can say he's the best. Yeah, that's good. Jose Aldo. I'm going to say either super underrated or underrated. I'm going to say underrated because I'm just going to say this. Jose Aldo, there are two people. There are two people that remember him for his loss against um, Conor McGregor. The fact is, is he fought nobody but killers the entirety of the rest of his career. People like Max Holloway, Alexander Volkanovsky, Pyotr Jan, Marab Devasvili. Bro fought absolute killers in multiple weight classes, went down a weight class later in his career, something that is rarely ever done. I'm going to put respect on his name for that. However, Volkanovski better. I understand he was undefeated for 13 years. Problem with that is how good was the competition at the beginning of those years? 
And I think people that are saying that Volkanovski will never surpass Jose Aldo despite beating Jose Aldo, and despite Aldo losing to Max Holloway multiple times, is kind of crazy. It's a crazy cope. Listen, he's great. He's a Hall of Famer. Second best featherweight ever. Volkanovski better. Justin Gaethje. I'm going to say now... I'm going to say he's properly overrated. I would have say, said overrated like uh, about like six months ago. I'm going to say properly overrated. He did KO Dustin Poirier. Now, people that are going crazy with it and saying that Justin Gaethje is going to beat Islam Makachev, yeah, no, you guys are kind of weird. But at the same time, I'm going to recant something I said in a previous tier list. Justin Gaethje has power. That was probably my biggest, baddest hot take in that video, and I'm going to say I was wrong on that. Justin Gaethje has power for lightweight. Justin the highlight Gaethje. And has evolved throughout his career despite losing half of his brain cells in the meantime. I'm going to say properly overrated. Next up, Kamaru Usman. I'm going to say super un... Super underrated. The fact is, is the amount of people that disrespect Kamaru Usman and didn't appreciate him as champion when he was champion is kind of staggering. I think Kamaru Usman is the second best champion of welterweight ever. Behind GSP, I think Leon Edwards isn't as good of a champion as Kamaru. Leon just needs to speed this up, okay? Like, we need to get through this blockade in welterweight, and then I'll, I, I will rate Leon more favorably. The fact is, is I think Kamaru gets a lot of shit. He he defended the belt with zero knees. Beat Kam Hamzat Shemaev in the third round of a fight that he fought on short notice. I mean, yeah, I want to say super underrated. Not as underrated as DC. Definitely up there. Kimbo Slice. I like Kimbo more than I like Greg Hardy. The problem is, is the amount of people that look at Kim... Kimbo Slice has one of the worst MMA fights. It's actually crowned the worst MMA fight in MMA history against Dada 5000. Yes, that was his name. Kimbo Slice was never even a ranked caliber fighter at heavyweight. Would get absolutely smoked in this modern era. Listen, rest in peace. But at the same time, the amount of people that are on the you know older side... That will look at like modern heavyweights and be like, man, I think Kimbo would have hanged. No. You don't know more about MMA. You're just an old casual, okay? Kimbo Slice would have get absolutely ragdolled in the modern MMA, okay? He just would. Next up, Lyoto Machida. I'm going to say... It's tough, okay? The fact is, is I'm going to say slightly overrated... Because I, I think a lot of these legacy fighters get a little bit overrated. The fact is, is if you compared them to the modern day era, they would lose, okay? Lyoto Machida's great. Make no mistake about it. One of the few people to win the light heavyweight title. Lost to John Jones and lost, like... <sighs> Lyoto's good. Make no mistake about it. And maybe it's because he was in the same era as John. And that's why he's not as good. I don't know. I can't do properly overrated. He's not underrated. The amount of people that do glaze Lyoto, I'm going to say... I, I, I'm going to say overrated. He also would drink his own piss to cut weight. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Michael Johnson. I'm going to say underrated because 50% of the time... I'm going to say top of underrated to properly overrated. 50% of the time, he's the best MMA fighter in the entirety of the UFC. Okay. The other 50%, he doesn't know how to fight. Other 50%, he loses to unranked um, MMA fighters. The other 50%, he beats people like Dustin Poirier. Like, if you're not gonna, like, gave Khabib Nurmagomedov the second toughest fight of his entire career. Like, he is that good. Just super inconsistent. Next up, Nate Diaz. I'm gonna say overrated. Like, there's a lot of people that, like, will look at Nate Diaz and being like, man, wrong era. He would have become a champion in this now if he was in his prime. No. The fact is, is Leon Edwards controlled just about every moment of that fight aside from that one exchange. He wasn't going to beat Kamaru Usman. I think Colby Covington beats him, and that's another dude on this list. 
he was never at like that super high level outside of the Conor McGregor fight, but I do believe that Conor McGregor fight stylistically served him very well. And that's why I'm going to say he's overrated. And then the fans. His fans are probably some of the most rabid in the entirety of the sport when they glaze his, like his career. The fact is, is he... I'm going to take it back. He is the most successful journeyman in the history of MMA. Like, between him and Jorge Masvidal, that, that's the two. Misa Tate. I'm going to say slightly underrated. The fact is, is if we're going off of women's MMA standards, she, she was never really that bad. She just gets eclipsed by, eclipsed by Ronda Rousey. Now, would she be able to compete nowadays? Here's the thing, maybe. The fact is, is women's MMA throws me through a loop because the fact is, is some people that I think are really good and are undefeated go up in the rankings and they get absolutely smoked by one championship quality, quality fighter. And the other side of it, sometimes people that I, I don't think are going to do good are become the champion. Juliana Pena versus Amanda Nunes. So I'm going to say underrated. Be because women's MMA just doesn't make any sense anymore. Next up, Nick Diaz. I'm going to say properly overrated. The fact is, is he's one of the few people. I think he. I think the only person is Michael Bisping that has fought prime GSP and prime Anderson Silva. Were these the best fights? No, he. But he went the distance with them. And in all honesty, I, I'm going to put him as properly overrated because the UFC did kind of not UFC. USADA robbed him of his career. I would say talent for talent, he is better than Nick Diaz, but the bigger star of the two, wait, who's the better fighter is Nick Diaz. Better fighter, Nick Diaz. The bigger star is Nate Diaz. I mix those up sometimes. But yeah, that, that, I'm going to say properly overrated purely because we did kind of rob him of his career. Next up is Ronda Rousey. Okay. Ugh. I'm going to say, I'm going to say super overrated to just overrated. And let me explain. If you have, Ronda Rousey was gifted the belt upon her induction into the UFC. That's only ever happened a couple of times. And Ronda Rousey is one of those times. One of the biggest stars made women's. I'm actually, because of that, I'll put her as overrated. Not even properly overrated. The fact is, is she is the reason that women's MMA exists. And I will say this. 50% of women's MMA is decent. The other 50% is absolute garbage. And I will thank Ronda for bring, for getting people to watch that. The fact is, is the UFC got behind her because she was fun behind a microphone. She was reasonably good looking. They didn't want Chris F Cyborg because he looks like Vanderlei Silva. They didn't want Amanda Nunes because didn't have the same appeal and then Amanda Nunes absolutely destroyed Ronda Rousey physically and mentally and then she just never recovered and went to fake fighting in the WWE but uh I know that sounds super negative but at the same time she did become a champion did defend the belt got humbled by Holly Holm though okay in an effort to not be super mean I'm gonna say overrated next up Rory McDonald Rory McDonald, he just had a really tough war with Robbie Lawler. I do believe the Robbie Lawler fight fucked him up. I think that Robbie Lawler fight, that's the one with the crazy stare down where Robbie Lawler has a completely split lip. I'm not going to sew clips of it because I, I've i seen videos get demonetized just for sewing the clips of that video, okay? So I'm not going to sew it. So, But that fight, I think, destroyed, not his mentality. It might have destroyed his mentality, actually. There's some people that when they take a beating like that, there's just something in their head that just doesn't want to go through that again. I mean, it's human nature. You can call somebody weak. You go through a beating like that, and you tell me you want to keep doing this for a living. I respect Rory McDonald to go through that war. I'm going to say middle underrated. I just can't put super underrated purely because I think he was good until after that fight. Okay, Championship qual um, caliber until after that fight. Tyron Woodley. The amount of disrespect that Tyron Woodley gets is insane, and prime Tyron Woodley was a problem. So I'm going to say super underrated, but like near the end of it, so he can go in here if he has to. And here's the reason. He was probably the most whiny champion ever. 
Like, the thing is, is, as much as I will say that he's super underrated, and, the, like, he wasn't as good as Kamara Usman. Kamara Usman was better on a microphone than Tyron Woodley. Tyron Woodley lost a boxing match to Jake Paul. Had a rough early part of the year, if you know what video got leaked. Prime Tyron Woodley was a problem. Ooh. Actually, I'm going to put him in over underrated. The more I'm thinking about it, the more I... He wasn't at the caliber of GSP. The fact is, is in his prime, people were really comparing him to GSP. And I just, I think that's a crazy comparison. I think GSP would have destroyed Tyron Woodley. Even prime Tyron Woodley. Beat Darren Till. Had a draw with Wonder Boy, who never even got the fight for the title after that. Yeah, no, I just can't. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, the more I think about it, the more I'm going to say, nah, I'm going to put him in, un I'm going to put him in just an underrated. Vanderlei Silva. Vanderlei Silva, okay, there's two groups of people, I'm gonna put him in just underrated, not super underrated, because there's a lot of people that just hear that he fought in Pride and had wars, and automatically think that he's one of the best MMA fighters of all time, no, you can be an OG, this is what I mean, people sometimes glaze the golden age MMA fighters, purely because they want to sound like an MMA intellectual, the fact is, is most Golden Age fighters would not be able to compete with current Age fighters because the current Age fighters learned from them. Like, if your sport has not improved in, in the course of 10 years, your sport is dying. That's what I think is happening with boxing. But Vanderlei Silva, he wouldn't be able to compete nowadays, arguably. I think somebody like Yuri and Jan would beat him. However... If you have some time to spare, look up Vanderlei Silva versus Rampage Jackson in Pride. Like, he did have some wars there. His stare down with... Mirko Krokop? Yeah, Mirko Krokop. That's the one that's considered the most intimidating stare down in MMA history. Now, that's done with the tier list that I originally found. Now, we're going to be doing the fighters that I've added. Jamal Hill. Underrated. The dude is fighting a one, like a one-man stand on Twitter right now against all the people that are saying, "Oh, he's not that good." The fact is, is Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill's better than Yuri. I said it. Jamal Hill's better than Yuri Prohaska. The fact is, is Yuri should have lost to Glover if he didn't get that rear naked choke. He was down on the scorecards. Jamal Hill beat him so bad he retired him. And anybody who wants to say, "Oh, well, the reason he fought like that is because he fought with." This is what I don't say. So you're telling me he decreased in fighting ability so much from the Yuri Prohaska fight to the Jamal Hill? There was no fight in between. They fought arguably the same person, and Jamal Hill absolutely dismantled him and retired him in front of his home crowd. Yuri Prohaska arguably lost. Like, that's all I'm saying. Jamal Hill's super underrated, better than Yuri, and honestly, outside of somebody like Magomed Ankalaev... I think Jamal Hill has stands the best chance at beating somebody like Alex Pereira. Next up, Edson Barboza. Edson Barboza is one of my favorite MMA fighters of all time. I'm going to say super underrated because the amount of people that only remember him for that one spinning back kick KO is insane. No, bro. He has one of the most underrated resumes in the history of MMA. He is up there with like your Anthony Sotime Pettis in terms of like skill level. I'm, I'm just going to say that. Edson Barboza is one of the greatest strikers that MMA has ever seen. Sounds like a glaze. Probably is. Not enough people respect Edson Jr. Barboza. And I think that's criminal. The fact is, is he fought in a heavier weight class, went down a weight class, is still competitive there. His fight with Sadiq Yusuf is a war. Underrated scrap. Need to watch it. If you have an ESPN Plus account, look it up. I love Edson Barboza. I'm biased towards him. The fact that he wasn't even on this list is kind of crazy. Super underrated. Colby Covington, overrated. Okay? Overrated. His fight with Leon Edwards is one of the worst performances by a challenger I have ever seen. It's actually one of the worst performances in a championship fight I've ever seen in men's MMA. For both of them. But at the same time, you can't talk all that shit and fight like that. I would respect Colby more if he got flatlined KO'd after talking all that than the fight that we got. What his best wins? Robbie Lawler had a close fight with Kamaru Usman. A journeyman Jorge Mas. But like you see what I'm saying? Like a lot of people will hype up the wins that he does have. I'm going to say 
top. I'm going to say right next to Ronda Rousey. They're good on a microphone. That's really what it is. And the persona is fading. The fact is, is a lot of people are, like, if you're going to play the heel, you have to accept that it's all going to end. And it's going to end like that. That is the problem with being a heel. People aren't going to be loyal to you unless you're like a chill son and unlikable. Colby Covington, I'm just going to say it out. Yeah, I think they cheated him out of an undisputed title. They did. They treated him bad. Super overrated, though. Next up, Hamzat Shemaev. I'm going to say overrated. Bet he's better than, like... What I mean by this, I'm not saying that these guys are better than him. What I'm saying is compared to how good his fan base thinks he is, is kind of crazy. The fact is, is he's the best first round fighter in the history of MMA. Loses half of his intensity in the in the second round. In the third round, he's practically a different fighter. Not spectacular striking, has a solid one-two, crazy power. For welterweight, I'm skeptical on middleweight, though, outside of the Gerald Marisart fight. The fact is, he was getting outstruck by Gilbert Burns and Kamaru Usman on 10 days notice. So I, I think people need to stop with that. When he came into the UFC, we thought he was going to become a triple champ. I say we. I was never under the spell. People said he was going to be a triple champion. Absolutely not. No. The fact is, is it's questionable if he has the ability to beat real middleweights. I don't... I'm going to say this right now. I think Yuri Prohaska would destroy... Hamzat Shemaev. I don't even think it would be that competitive, frankly. I think Hamzat would have a good first round, but then get smoked by Yuri. I would be socked if he wins. Not socked. I would invite him to just win one belt. Stop calling out these other champions. The fact is, is Brennan Allen has a better case to make a championship call out than you do. Please bring back the old Hamzat Shemaev that would fight and on. Two fights in 10 days. Bring that back. Your inactivity is killing you. Please fight more. Fight Israel Adesanya in Saudi Arabia. Fight Jared Kennedy in Saudi Arabia. Get you into a title picture. You're not getting a title shot. That's a whole rant. Overrated. Next up, Charles Oliveira. I'm, I'm very conflicted on this. I'm going to say either properly overrated or overrated. I'm going to say overrated for now. Let me explain. The amount of people that disrespected Char um, Charles Charles on the come up is insane. Half of his entire career is character development. You want to talk about a dude that barely ever took any easy fight? Charles Oliveira is your guy. Fought legends of the sport in not just one, but two weight classes. I'm not going to say he quit. People will bring up the Max Holloway fight and the Paul Felder fight. Listen, they said that if he got hit like that again, he would be paralyzed from the neck down his entire career. And guess what this dude decided to do? Do another fight. Like, I respect Charles Oliveira. He beat Justin Gaethje. He beat Dustin Poirier. And beat them quicker than Khabib did. Okay? Like, I'm going to say... Actually, I'm going to say he's properly overrated. The only reason I was flirting with overrated is because people think that he's going to beat Islam Makachev. I think Islam is just better. I think Islam's better than Khabib. Like, I think the lightweight division is a more difficult division now than it was when Khabib was fighting. And the fact is, styles make fights. Khabib had a good style to fight people at lightweight. Islam Makachev has taken matchups that are more difficult than Khabib did. And speaking of Khabib, we're going to do Khabib. I'm going to say overrated. Not super overrated. The fact is, is he was a super dominant champion. I'm going to say he's a little bit more overrated than Hamzat Shemaev. Why do I say that? He's not the GOAT. I'm sorry. I'm like, It's not like he had the most challenging come up of, of, of lightweight. His best wins are Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor, and Justin Gaethje. Of those two, Charles Oliveira beat both of them and beat them quicker than he did. It cracks me up that Khabib fans will say, oh, well, Conor was never that good. Motherfucker. Conor McGregor is one of your guys' best wins. If there's no Conor, Khabib is not as big of a star as he is. That's a fact. If Khabib never fought Conor McGregor, the amount of people... Who wouldn't know, I want, I'm not going to say who wouldn't know, but who wouldn't regard Khabib as the GOAT would go down like exponentially, okay? 
The fact is, is Khabib's biggest fight was Conor McGregor, biggest star power. That's what made him a star. Made him get that much. Like, it, the amount of people who say he's the GOAT in the second coming of MMA Christ is absolutely insane. Overrated, still a great fighter, though. Like, when I say overrated, it's not that these fighters are bad. It's that their fan base thinks they're way better than they are. Next up, Alex Pereira. I'm going to say properly overrated. Yeah, I'm going to say properly overrated going... Yeah. The fact is, is a lot of MMA fans do understand that he isn't doesn't have the best grappling. Like, a lot of people do believe Magomed Ankalaev would beat Alex Pereira if, you know, they aren't standing up and striking. I do believe they're right when they say Alex Pereira outstrikes everybody in that division. I think they're right by saying that. The only reason I would even flirt with overrated is there are people that believe that he could win a heavyweight title, but there's few and far between. No, not a lot of people actually believe Alex Pereira would beat Tom Aspinall. I don't believe he would beat Tom Aspinall. But there are some people that will say, oh, well, he's been cherry-picked opponents. He was fast-tracked up the title. I'm just going to say it right now. Getting fast-tracked up the rankings, yes, is Dana White privilege. It does not do you a favor because that means you have less fights to get good. If people want to bring up, oh, well, he's overrated because he got cherry-picked. Well, I, I would argue they weren't necessarily cherry-picked. Middleweight's just not that good. Like, as a division, middleweight's not that good. If you're going to say, oh, well, he's not that good because he was fast-tracked up to a uh, title shot with Israel Adesanya. He won the fights, didn't he? He beat Israel, didn't he? Beat Jan. Beat Yuri. <laughs> like, won two titles in two years. Nobody's ever been able to do that before, at least not in this current era. Like, that's the point I'm trying to say. Like, yes, you can argue some stuff, but, like, by your reasoning, Darren Till, because he was fast-tracked up the title, he's... Like, they fast-tracked Darren Till. He lost to Tyron Woodley. That could have easily have happened to Alex Pereira. I don't think they expected Alex to beat Israel. But he did, and now this is where we're at. But there you go. Let's look through this tier list. Is there anyone that, like, blatantly sticks out to me? Yeah. I'm going to put Connor at the top of properly overrated because he is near that overrated spot. But I think I did good on this one. I think this is going to be one of my better tier lists in terms of judgment. Um, tell me what you think on here. Is there a fighter that you think should have made the tier list? I know there's a few that you could have made now that I'm thinking about it. But at the same time, I think this is a pretty good tier list. If you want to do this tier list, go to tiermaker.com. I'll have a link for it in the bio. And I think that's going to be it for the video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing and liking the video. And with that out of the way, adios.